for day. We are busy with Newton's second law and today we're going to have a look at um, the calculation on an object that is pulled or pushed with at an angle. Right? So we still have we're not working on the slope yet. We are looking at an object. It's going to move horizontally. We're going to pull it with a force at an angle. Right. So the first example, we have a boy that drags a crate with a mass of 60 kilos across a floor he uses a force of 300 newton and this force makes an angle of 28 degrees with the horizontal. Now we have to first calculate the acceleration when there's no friction and then we'll be calculating the acceleration with friction. Right, so now if we consider Newton's second law, the first sentence that tells us that a resultant force accelerates an object in the direction of the force. So this will mean that the force and acceleration has to be in the same direction. So if we now look at our um, situation, we have an object horizontally, so the object will move horizontally, but we have a force at an angle. So it means we'll have to consider which force works in the same horizontal position. So whenever we have uh, forces at an angle, we need to consider our Fx and Fy components. Fx, Fy component. Right. Now your Y component is not in the direction of movement but the X component is. So if there's no friction, then our free body diagram will only consist of the X force. And this means that the Fx is our resultant force. That will only be when we only have one force, right? And mass and acceleration. How do we now again calculate our um, X component? We've got adjacent and we've got the hypotenuse there so it's cos so it will be 300 cos 28 is equal to 60a and now it's easy to calculate acceleration by just dividing 300 cos 28 with 60 and this brings us to 4,41 meter per second square and very important it is in the original direction of motion Right, then if there is friction, we can still calculate the acceleration if we know the friction. So calculate the acceleration of the crate if the floor exerts a frictional force of 64,88 Newton. So let's again look at our free body diagram. We still have Fx to the right because of the 300 Newton and now we have our frictional force given as 64,88 Newton. Now, because we know forces are vectors, we're going to choose one as positive and the other side as negative. So then we'll just start with Newton's second law again. The resultant force is now the same as the two forces acting together. So I've got my x-force, I've got my friction force, and mass and acceleration. X will still be 300 cos 28 minus, because it's in the negative direction, 64,88 is 68. Do the subtraction, divide by acceleration uh, by 60 to get the acceleration of 3,33 meters per second squared but still in the original direction because my answer is positive. Positive means to the right. Okay, that is pulling. Now if we look at an object being pushed, I can have 
a roller um, of 200 kilos and this boy is going to push it with a force of 480 Newton at an angle of 37 degrees. Now, what is the magnitude of the frictional force? So, for this example, we need to calculate the frictional force. First of all, if the velocity is constant, and secondly, if we have an acceleration of 0 0,9 meters per second squared. So, we're going to see what will the friction force be if it's constant? Now, very important when we talk about constant velocity. There's still forces because it has to move. So, let's look at our free body diagram. We have, again, now important here. Let's just look at the direction of my X forces and Y forces. Now, this 480, the arrow is downward. So Y has to be down and X to the left. They are actually head to tail and that is more like your resultant force. Let's just go one up again and just consider the one that is pulled. There the X, you will see the X and the Y head to tail. There you've got your um, force that is applied. So make sure about the direction of your X and Y. And now you will see this roll is supposed to go to the left. So we're going to use the FX that are in the same direction as the movement. All right, so I've got my FX force here. They're asking me to calculate the frictional force. All right, now important. Now we're going to consider what is the meaning of this. Force is acting, but it's constant, meaning there is no acceleration. When will there be no acceleration? When these two forces are the same, then my resultant will be zero. And if your resultant is zero, acceleration is zero. It's still moving, it's just not going faster. So, in actual fact, this X force is just equal to the frictional force. We don't have to calculate friction, we calculate X, because X and friction are the same. It will be 480 cos 37 degrees and that gives us a 383,34 Newton and it is to the left or the original direction but in this case we can just use left. Alright, now if it accelerates, if the acceleration is to the left at 0 0,9 meters per second square. Now I do have an Fx and an F friction that are not the same. So we'll start with Newton's second law. F resultant is Ma. My resultant force is the sum of those two. Fx plus Ff. Don't put in a negative here. Although it's in the opposite direction, you will see that your calculation is going to give you that negative in A. Alright, my Fx, we already have it. It's 383,34. We're going to calculate the friction. We know it is 200 and we all also know that is 0 0,9. Okay, so now my friction force can be calculated with the 200,09 and you will see that this 0, 0,9 is positive and this force is positive. They are both in the same direction. I can use left as positive. That one goes over minus 383,34 and that gives me minus 203,34 Newton. So now I've got a negative answer which refers to the opposite direction. So, my friction force is 203,34 Newton to the right.